Hi everybody, welcome to Book Talks with Miss Thomas. In today's video, I'm going to do my Southern Charm Readathon picks. <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome to Book Talks with Miss Thomas. So I'm excited to tell you what books I recommend for the Southern Charm Readathon, um, hosted by book lover Amanda, who is fantastic. We all love Amanda, and she just had a birthday. So go over there and wish her happy birthday and show her some love. Um, I think Truffles <laughs> maybe is boycotting the Readathon. I'm not sure what that is, but um, that's Truffles, by the way, if you're new here. And let's get to it. All right, so the first book that I'm going to recommend falls under the bless your heart category. And that is for a book that is emotional and heartwarming. And that's a really easy one for me. Uh, that would be the Traveling Cat Chronicles, which I mean, you get your tissues ready because it was a beautiful book. It was, it was very sad, but it was also very beautiful and wonderful. And that is the story of this guy who has to give up his cat and he's trying to find a home for his cat, except it's told from the cat's point of view. And so the cat doesn't want to part with his owner. And so he like um, interferes with all these opportunities for a new home. And he's just so loyal to his owner um, to the bitter end. And it was just a really, really sweet story about a man told from the point of view of his cat. And it reflects, you know, because every time the man tries to give his cat to a new friend, um, it reflects on that friendship. And it just talks about the cat's love for the man and the cat's loyalty to the man. And even though Truffles is not looking at us, <laughs> There's no better friend than a cat, I'm telling you. Okay. Sweet Tea, a book with something sweet on the cover. I'm going to go with Mango, Mambo, and Murder. And that is the story of Miriam, a Cuban-American who is asked to, uh, well, her friend Alma actually kind of pushes her into interviewing for a spot on a cooking show. And she ends up getting the job. And so she cooks little um, Cuban dishes on this cooking show. And as she does it, she talks about her Cuban culture. Uh, but she is living in America and she's married to um, a white man. His last name I think is like Smith. Hold on. Yes, Robert Smith. And so she has these horrible in-laws. This mother-in-law is just horrible and she makes a lot of cheap shots and microaggressions. And so there's a lot in there about the Cuban culture that I enjoyed. Um, Miriam is also trying to raise her son with, um, you know, a, a, like a dual heritage. She's trying to raise him to be bilingual and to really respect his Cuban heritage. And the mother-in-law is just, you know, awful about it. So while Miriam is working on this cooking show, someone mysteriously dies. And actually it's the second person, I think, who mysteriously dies in her presence. The first was at a luncheon. And so Miriam wants to solve the mystery of why these people are dying because her friend Alma is implicated in the crime and she wants to protect her friend. So it's a sweet, cozy mystery, but there's also a lot about Miriam's cooking in the book. And I really enjoyed it. Hot as Blue Blazes, a book with something hot on the cover. Now, this is the only book I haven't read yet. All the other ones I highly recommend, but this one I might as well highly recommend because Amanda recommended it. And if Amanda said it's good, it's good. So um, this one, Amanda has been talking about on her channel, Beaches, Bungalows, and Burglary. And she just made it sound so good, I had to read it for myself. So this one, um, it's set at a beach. It's in a, a camper, a woman on the beach or the lake. It's Kentucky. And I'm judging from the flower on the cover that the setting is going to be hot. So I haven't read this one yet. I don't know anything about it. But if you want to know about this book, check out Amanda's review. Since it's her readathon, I wanted to give her a, a special shout out. Um, and I'm going to read it in honor of Amanda for her readathon. Heavens to Betsy, a mystery or thriller that will shock you. Okay, so I'm a hard reader to shock. Um, so I struggled with this one. I think I overthought it. As far as the plot twists go, to me, Harlan Coben is the father of the plot twist. That's the first uh, book with a really surprising plot twist that I recall reading. And that one is... 
Fool Me Once by Harlan Coben. It was really good. Now, I read it years ago before I became a Christian booktuber, so I can't promise that there's nothing objectionable in it. Um, you know, because before I really became convicted, I was a lot more tolerant of what I read in books. But I just remember the plot twist and being really surprised and like edge of my seat uh, with that particular book. And so I did go through most of Harlan Coben's books and I really like his books and I like his plot twists. Um, more recently, I read Manor House, and that's not a Christian book, but I don't think there was anything too objectionable in it. And that was a good book with some plot twists. It had a couple of plot twists. And in Manor House, there are these characters, Nicole and Tom, and um, they won the lottery and they bought this really high tech house. And they have all this stuff, like everything money could buy when um, Nicole comes home one day to find Tom dead. And so it's a mystery about what actually happened to Tom and there's all kinds of weird characters in the book and you never know are they after money or you know are they sincere and so Manor House is a pretty good mystery with a plot twist. But for the purpose of this uh, readathon, I'm going to recommend for my plot twist book or my shocking mystery, One of Us is Lying, because that's a young A book that I read, and it's the beginning of a series. And that's another thing. I'm trying to recommend books that are in a series so that if you like it, you can always have another book in the series that you like. So in the book, One of Us is Lying, um, a bunch of kids have after-school detention. It's almost like a, a modern breakfast club. They have after-school detention when um, one of the students dies of uh, anaphylactic shock, and it turns out that someone may have given him uh, what he was allergic to to kill him. And so there's a lot of different scandal and different things going on. And the teenagers sort of band together because, you know, they're in this terrible situation and um, they don't know who to trust. So it was a really good one. One of us is lying. I recommend that one. For my free space, I'm going to talk about Living Lies because that's a really good audiobook that I found on my Libby app. And it's one that I don't hear um, enough about. And it's just one that is just so good. And it's the beginning of a series. So Living Lies begins with Lane. Um, Lane is on a bridge contemplating jumping when this guy comes along, Charlie. And Charlie interferes and uh, she ends up not jumping. But then Lane stumbles upon uh, a murder victim and she starts screaming because um, it's the same event. You know, she's walked away from the guy on the bridge and she goes into the woods to get home when she stumbles upon this murder victim and she's screaming, screaming, screaming. And so Charlie comes to see what's going on and it turns out there's a murder victim. And so Charlie investigates the murder with the help of Lane. And, um, you know, as the story unfolds, you find out why Lane wants to jump off the bridge and you find out about Charlie and why he's picked up and moved to this new town. And there's also a lot of uh, veterans in the story that I really enjoyed getting to know. And since it's the first in a series, I look forward to learning more about the characters. They were all wonderful characters. Um, Lane runs like a diner and after the diner closes, she opens it up to military veterans. And so they come for a free meal and they gather together and enjoy each other's company. And it's just such a fun book with such fun characters. And there's this woman that works with Lane, who is Charlie's uh, aunt, I think. And she is a very, very godly woman. And she talks about the Bible um, often in the book. So it also has a great faith content. So my free space, no question, definitely goes to Living Lies. Okay, All the Fixins, a book with multiple genres. Now for me, I have a beef. I don't have my petty pen. <laughs> Amanda's the one with the petty pen. But I will say um, it kind of bothers me that Christian mysteries tend to have um, romance in them. I don't know why we can't just have a good mystery that's a mystery. So if you can recommend a good, clean Christian mystery without romance peppered in, put it in the comments, please. But um, I feel like most Christian mysteries are multiple genre in that they at least pepper in romance. So I just told you about Living Lies. There's some romance in that one. 
I've read a couple of Lynette Eason books. They typically have uh, a mystery, and then there's usually a romance, Colleen Coble. There's romance peppered with mystery. So I'm going to just go with Christian mystery, having multiple genres. Um, I'd love to find a good mystery that is clean or Christian, Christian or clean. <laughs> and it just has straight up mystery, really good mystery. Chicken and Dumplings, a book that acts as comfort food. Okay, so for me, at first I thought Finley Donovan because she's predictable and fun, but then I thought, you know what? She's a good one, but there are these mysteries with this little cat named Elvis. Um, they're so cute, and there's a whole bunch of them, and my friend Kay at my church, look, she wrote with a Sharpie the order of them, so this one's the eighth one, and this one's the fifth one, and I haven't worked my way through the entire mystery, but they're just, they're so fun. Um, these books are about a girl named Sarah who owns a second-hand shop, and she has sort of been claimed uh, Elvis owns her. She's not the owner of Elvis. Elvis owns her. He's this cat that adopted her and he is always active in solving the crimes and he can sniff out the truth and they're just so cute and so sweet. So um, books with Elvis, those are very comforting to me. I highly recommend them. They are called The Second Chance Cat Mysteries and they're by Sophie Ryan and they're just they're lovely. They're so fun. Um, Sarah has these elderly women that are involved in her life that they, one of them works in the shop and they're all friends with each other and they all look out for her because they're friends with her grandmother and they're just really fun, comforting, cozy mysteries. Highly recommend. Hey y'all, a book with more than one point of view. And that one for me that I highly recommend is Mother Daughter Murder Night. And that's the story of three women. Um, they're all related and they're three different generations. So Jack is the granddaughter, Jacqueline or Jacqueline. And she is wrongly accused of murder. And her mother, Beth, is this nurse that just wants to have a quiet life <laughs> with her daughter, Jack, when her mother, Lana, shows up. And Lana is like this powerhouse boss babe who, for no apparent reason, has come to live with them or at least to stay with them for a long-term visit. And what Lana isn't telling anyone is that she has cancer. And she does not want to just give up on life. She's determined to like feel vital once again. And so she focuses all her energy into proving her granddaughter's innocence and catching the real killer. And so she ends up getting her granddaughter and her daughter on board. And of course, the Lana and her daughter, the nurse, they have a stilted relationship and Jack is the like the glue that holds them together. So the three women, they have their own dynamic and they have to figure out how to get along and then they end up working together to try to solve this murder. And it was just a really fun um, murder mystery with multiple points of view and three different women. It was not a Christian mystery, but it was a clean mystery and I really enjoyed it. Last book, are you ready for it? Howdy Partner, a book with family or friendship. And that one was indirectly recommended to me by my friend Stacy at Wandering with Stacy. And I'll tell you why, because on her channel, she was talking about a book that she really enjoyed and she didn't know when she was reading it that it was the second book in a series. And so she hadn't read the first book in the series. Um, but I was looking, as I was listening to her on her channel, I was looking for the book she was recommending when the first book in the series came up. So I, I read the first one, Stacy read the second one. I'll put her video, um, I'll link it below. But the first book is called, Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone. And that is a story told by Ernest, who is a mystery writer. And so he's writing a story uh, as a mystery writer. He's telling us that he's a mystery writer and he has these rules when writing a mystery. But then he starts to tell us his own mystery about um, a family reunion that he went to uh, and all these different things happen and different people die. And um, there's a serial killer in the book and there's some other incidents that... Uh, are related where we find out we're reading the book and we're listening to find out how every one of his family members has killed someone and what does that mean and what does that look like and could one of them be the serial killer 
So Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone is my last book recommendation for the Southern Charm Readathon. I highly encourage you to participate in this readathon. It's a lot of fun. And I will get back on here and tell you my thoughts on this book that Amanda recommended. All the other ones I've read and I highly recommend. So um, this one I'm confident I will enjoy and recommend later. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.